Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Thursday the 26th of August 2025. Upcoming today we have violent winter storms expected across southeastern Australia. Reaching a peak on Friday and Saturday we're expecting plenty of snowfall, rainfall, damaging winds and large seas. Calmer weather expected across southwest and WA but we're still expecting another strong storm to come through tomorrow and rainfall is beginning to pipe up across far north Queensland with the official start of the wet season not far away. Let's get stuck straight into things this morning if you are brand new to the channel please Please do consider subscribing. But for your Tuesday morning down in towards southeastern Australia, we definitely have some serious severe weather on the way, which is where we're going to start things off. First off, take a look at the swirl occurring in the Great Australian Bight now as a large complex low pressure system with multiple smaller low pressure systems around it moves into the Great Australian Bight. This is bringing in a rain band which is trailing all the way in, bringing moisture from the Indian Ocean, or it was yesterday, bypassing through uh, inland Western Australia, parts of the Northern Territory, and then piling on into South Australia, particularly south of Coober Pedy. We've had widespread falls between 10 to 25 millimetres in the last 24 hours. This rainfall in a moderate capacity has made it in towards western Victoria and even central Victoria overnight with some showers and some strong winds reported around Melbourne, especially towards the north of Melbourne, and is expected to move through the western hub of New South Wales, especially into the southwestern corner of the state throughout the course of today. And for those locations along the Victoria-New South Wales border, it's going to be a bit of a gloomy, miserable, wet day with this rainfall moving through. It's nothing too crazy, nothing too heavy. This low-pressure system, whilst it's massive and whilst it's certainly looks like it could pack a punch. It is definitely more of a show pony than it is a significant severe weather threat. That's not the same for the one coming through on Friday. I'll talk about that one in just a hot second. Let's talk about what's going on right now. As you, as I've just mentioned, showers and strong winds quite widespread through Victoria, South Australia and parts of Tasmania. 59 kilometres an hour at South Channel Island, 58 kilometres an hour at Mount Gellibrand, just south of Geelong, 48 kilometres an hour at Melbourne Airport with gusts close to 70 kilometres an hour. You can see the rainfall is expected to continue throughout the course of today. It's not going to occur in too much of a major capacity. You can see there's nothing that really stands out in the way of too much in the way of heavy rainfall occurring for mainland Australia. There will be some heavier falls across the West Coast of Tasmania and into the northwest of the state throughout this afternoon and into this evening and rainfall could get a little bit heavier at times through the Victorian Alps and into the New South Wales high country as well later on tonight and into very early tomorrow morning. Showers are going to then pipe up in the wake of this weather system moving through across the South Australian coastline much later tonight into early tomorrow morning. These ones could be a little bit heavier and they will have some strong winds embedded with them and showers and strong winds expected to move into the west coast of Victoria through tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon and then in a very significant capacity into the west West coast of Tasmania through tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon as well. We're definitely going to be seeing a lot of rain throughout Tasmania tomorrow and that's going to kick off probably seven or eight days of extremely wet weather for the west coast of Tasmania. Rainfall will continue throughout much of Victoria. Victoria is just going to be a soggy mess over the next 48 hours by the looks of things with rainfall not actually easing across much of the state uh, until later tomorrow night and forget about it if you're on the coast you've got rainfall coming through pretty much constantly from this point onwards. You can see showers very persistent for coastal locations through Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, which is when we're expecting this significant low pressure system to begin building. Uh, all this uh, time, we're kind of expecting winds to remain out of the west, which means that we're going to see this southwesterly or westerly flow move through, which is basically what we see in the uh, roaring 40s further south, including Tasmania, but also more often than not much further south in Tasmania, is we just see this flow of shower and cloud activity moving through across the much more southern places south of Australia through the Southern Ocean. It clips the bottom part of New Zealand, which is why the South Island of New Zealand is so wet but when we have a negative swing into the southern annular mode it brings this shower and this rain activity a lot further north than usual and that's exactly what we're going to be seeing this week we normally see a couple of weeks like this every single year through southeastern australia it's not unusual we haven't actually seen anything like this so far this winter season so it does make it a little bit unusual for this year uh, but we're just expecting this shower and this cold weather and this winter's weather to be dragged a lot further north than usual and it's going to collide with the southeastern corner of australia which will bring widespread showers rain cold weather winds and westerlies are coming through throughout the course of today, tomorrow, Thursday, and then especially towards Friday. Friday is the day that I'm most interested in and we are going to see the quick development of a strong low pressure system uh, through Friday morning and into Friday night. That's then going to clip the northwestern corner of Tasmania with some very strong winds moving into the Bass Strait or over the northern coastline of Tasmania before moving out into the Tasman Sea later Friday night into early Saturday morning. This is going to be a very quick developing low pressure system and it will pack a punch, that's for sure. Have a look at maximum wind gusts onto the uh, western side of this system here. We're going to be talking about wind gusts widespread between 90 to 100 kilometers 
now and they will increase very quickly through Friday night and into early Saturday morning. You can see winds in the Bass Strait expected to exceed 125 kilometers an hour for a brief period of time Friday night and into Saturday morning. I'm not sure what the spirit of Tasmania schedule is, but this will definitely have a significant impact on that. They will not sail through a storm like this. That is very serious stuff indeed. The Bass Strait is notorious for having some very significant weather. They haven't actually copped anything too crazy in the way of serious storms so far this calendar year, uh, but this is definitely looking like it's going to be the strongest storm for the Bass Strait throughout the year of 2025 or this season, that's for sure. Strong winds coming out of the southwest are actually going to extend it well before the main arrival of this storm system throughout South Australia, parts of western New South Wales that could kick up a few dust storms into the northern half of New South Wales and into the western half of Victoria as well. Widespread sustained winds between 40 to 60 kilometres an hour throughout Friday is expected, with stronger wind gusts pushing close to 100 kilometres an hour, also a possibility. Widespread shower and storm activity is also expected as well. Think of this as a low pressure system riding far north and then the showery stuff that comes through on the western side of the system and sometimes the northern side of the system is going to be dragged a lot further north and a lot further around the system than what we would usually see, which means whilst the low pressure system is going to remain offshore from mainland Australia for the most part, we're actually expecting mainland Australia to cop a lot of showers, a lot of strong winds. They're really going to be embedded in that polar air mass that's associated on the western side of cold fronts down into the southern ocean. So uh, very interesting stuff indeed. It's certainly going to be something worth watching that's for sure and it's going to look very impressive on the satellite and the radar imagery as it blows through. The places I'm most concerned about right now are going to be those across coastal Victoria, extending across to the Murray-Darling uh, River uh, release area just towards the south uh, east of Adelaide. That's the places that I'm most concerned about in the wind threat here. Very likely between uh, sort of the Adelaide area uh, across the remainder of the South Australian coastline towards the east and then the entirety of the Victorian coastline out to about Malakuta. That will include King Island and the Furnoa Islands in the Bass Strait and also for the west coast and the northwest uh, wilderness of Tasmania. All those coastal locations we're looking at wind gusts in excess of 100 kilometers an hour, possibly approaching 125 kilometers an hour for those in Victoria and the northwest of Tasmania. This will, of course, bring massive wave heights as well. I mean, if we have a look at the wave heights we're expecting from this weather system, especially later on through Friday night, the forecast modeling not really doing it justice into the Bass Strait, but we'll be seeing wind waves with a period of about 10 or 11 seconds, very, very tight wave periods indeed, pushing with these wave heights to about seven or eight meters in height. That's going to cause some very serious coastal erosion if it does get itself close to land, which it looks like it's going to. So again, coastal Victoria, this is probably going to be one of the strongest storms of the year, especially in terms of wind and waves. Rainfall, maybe not so much. We're not expecting as much rainfall to come through. But also for the uh, elevated regions in Victoria as well, the Victorian Alps through Friday night and into Saturday morning, and also for the New South Wales high country as well, some very strong wind gusts are expected. For those above 16 or 1700 metres, I will not be riding off maximum wind gusts above 125 kilometres an hour for a sustained period of time. It'll be very interesting to see how strong these winds do get, and that will of course give way to blizzard conditions. Into the Tasman Sea, this storm is going to continue strengthening winds here of 140 kilometres an hour early on Saturday morning. They will be offshore, so for the most part, Australia is not actually expected to get clobbered by these winds, but that's a very, very powerful storm indeed moving out into the Tasman Sea, where it will increase in size and then head over towards New Zealand, where it's meant to be a little bit more of a minimal threat to New Zealand compared to what it is expected to be for Australia. It's still going to keep Tasmania in that westerly airflow, which means showers and storms are going to continue for Tassie on Saturday and into Sunday, and then the rainfall finally expected to ease off for Tasmania uh, a couple of days after it eases off across southeastern Australia. So for southeastern Australia, the mainland regions, about the 2nd of September is when rainfall should begin to clear. For Tasmania, that's more likely to be around the 4th or the 5th. We'll of course still see more winter storms throughout the remainder of September and into October, but we will uh, see a reduction in the severity of them, especially as we head into some more dry months now. I'm very aware of how long this forecast is going for. So I'm going to quickly bang through the rainfall and estimates from the forecast modeling here. So this will look at 10 day rainfall accumulations from now out to the 4th of September. The bulk of this is going to come through from showers uh, today, tomorrow and Thursday. There'll also be a pretty significant portion coming through on Friday and Saturday and then a few more showers expected behind it, meaning the wet weather will continue for the west coast of Tasmania, therefore onwards. But it's just quicker to go through 10 day rainfall accumulations. So over the next 10 days, Adelaide looking at about 60 millimetres. The Adelaide Hills, though, could see closer to 100 millimetres of rainfall and some snow is possible in a very minimal capacity onto the Flinders Range. It's a very rare event that is but we may see a uh, half a centimetre or even a centimetre of snowfall onto the highest elevations of the Flinders Ranges and potentially even into the Adelaide Hills. The Eyre Peninsula looking at the further 25 to 50 millimetres south of Streaky Bay. Unfortunately, rainfall doesn't make it too far inland or even up towards the Juna, so rainfall uh, hopes there have been dashed lately. The bulk of the rainfall that's going to fall from this weather event has already actually fallen for Sejuna uh, and into much of the Eyre Peninsula as well. 
Rainfall accumulations across Western Victoria between 10 to 25 millimetres into the middle half of Victoria, uh, dropping to about 15 millimetres as you get closer to the New South Wales border, and up to 10 millimetres expected as far north as Wanaring and Cobar in towards New South Wales. Wanaring itself isn't actually expecting any rainfall. That's a bit of uh, a bit wrong, but White Cliffs and Wilcannia could see 10 millimetres of rainfall, and we may see that rainfall penetrate as far inland as Cobar. Rainfall accumulations into the southern coast of Victoria looking very healthy indeed. We could be seeing widespread falls between 60 to 80 millimetres over the next 10 days, with isolated falls around Mount Gambier, Warner Ball, Colac, and Robe pushing close to 100 millimetres. Rainfall accumulations tonight are expected to be very solid across the uh, New South Wales high country and the Victorian Alps as well, and falls pushing close to 100 millimetres are possible over the next 24 hours for both locations. Melbourne looking at a solid 60 millimetres, of which about 10 millimetres is expected into the next 24 hours. It's a full course going to be the west coast of Tasmania taking the cake with the rainfall accumulations here, pushing close to 250 millimetres around Strawn and Queenstown. Rainfall accumulations also expected to be well above those triple digit figures through the Lake St. Clair National Park and around Mount Reed as well. Rainfall accumulations will be lighter on the east coast considering their more protected nature, but the north coast could still see between 50 to 80 millimetres of rainfall into the next 10 days, the bulk of that coming through on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Rainfall accumulations also expected to be solid around Hobart, about 30 millimetres with a lot of that coming through over a very spread out period of time. So wintry weather is expected to really kick in and stay in for Hobart and uh, surrounds. Snowfall also looking very, very healthy indeed over the next 10 days. Up to 60 centimetres of the stuff is possible around Threadbow and Parish Valley, 50 centimetres around Mount Hotham and Mount Buller, and up to about 30 centimetres possible around Mount Borbor. So Victoria and New South Wales all looking at some very healthy snowfall accumulations. Disregard all of this stuff here, but as you can see, an enhanced amount of snowfall on the forecast expected around the Flinders Ranges, and a couple of centimetres is most certainly a possibility. Very unlikely to settle, but it could be a rare uh, snow occasion for the Flinders Ranges. Snowfall also looking to be quite healthy across Across Tassie, we could be seeing close to about 40 or 50 centimetres into the Lake St. Clair National Park and about 10 centimetres into the Ben Lomond National Park as well. Outside of Bathurst, we may see some snowfall as well, pushing close to five or six centimetres of snowfall. Hardly any of that is expected to settle, and about a centimetre or two is possible for the Barrington Tops, not expecting anything into the northern tablelands of New South Wales either, though. A very compre uh, comprehensive and complex winter's weather forecast across southeastern Australia. Heaps more information to come on the Facebook page today, so follow that. And feel free to hit me up if you've got any specific questions, comments, or concerns about this weather event. It is going to be gnarly, but it's typical weather for this time of the year. So hunker down, be safe, and be calm, and you will be fine. Southwestern WA showers still ongoing across the south coast, in fact, in a pretty significant capacity around Albany, extending inland to the Stirling Range National Park, and showers also very persistent further along the coastline out towards Esperance as well. Showers pretty persistent around the Perth metro area, protected uh, south of Mandra though because of the Cape Naturalist area, but we are still expecting showers to really begin to pile on into the next couple of hours through the Perth metro area. They will slowly ease off as the day goes on, and you can see showers for the most part across southwestern WA expected to ease off throughout the course of today. They will begin to enhance again through tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon along the southwest capes, and we will see a brief resurgence in rainfall and showers moving into the Perth metro area tomorrow afternoon or late in the afternoon after about three o'clock, coinciding with rush hour as you would expect for a Perth weather system coming through, and then rainfall continuing to pile on through late Wednesday afternoon and into early Thursday morning when showers and storms are expected to finally begin to ease off from southwestern WA for a extended period of time. Actually, you can see no rainfall expected under the influence of a high pressure ridge until at least the third or the fourth, in fact, not a little bit further than that, about the fourth or the fifth of September. That'll be very good news indeed, giving time for everything to dry out. We really do need it because southwestern WA. So further rainfall accumulations, whilst they will most certainly be welcome, it'd be good to get a seven or eight day block of dry and if not sunny weather across the southwest corner of WA, which looks to happen uh, post Thursday, the 28th of August, out to about the 4th or the 5th of September at this point in time. Very good news indeed. Rainfall accumulations, unexpected to be anything too crazy from the weather system coming through tomorrow. We could see a further 20 millimetres or so over the next three days, potentially a little bit higher the further north you go from showers coming through today. But rainfall accumulations aren't expected to be anything too serious, with the heaviest rainfall expected into the hills and along the southwest coast and southwest capes out to about Albany from this weather system coming through tomorrow. It is definitely not expected to be serious. It's definitely not expected to be severe. So there's no point in worrying about it or kicking up a storm. Typical weather for this time of the year. 
Now, I did mention far north Queensland. There is uh, increased reports of humidity and warm weather across far north Queensland. They're going to start off what is going to be a week of above average temperatures for this time of the year. Temperatures aren't anything too crazy right now. And you can see wind observations into the Coral Sea. Two indicative factors of approaching rainfall are completely fine and completely in check. We're not expecting rainfall to pipe up until next month, but you can see showers and storms expected to begin extending across far north Queensland and even north Queensland by extension from about the 4th or the 5th of September. And they've been rock solid on the last couple of weeks with the forecast modelling with rainfall coming through into the later parts of the first week of September and then easing off for the second week of September. What we're expecting right now is a three-day block of showers and the odd storm moving through in towards the Casper Coast and parts of the Daintree Rainforest as well. And you can see five-day rainfall accumulations after the 4th of September actually expected to be very decent here. In fact, the Eastern Bay calling for up to 175 millimetres of rainfall on this forecast run here. I think that is a little bit excessive. I do believe if we do get a three-day block of on and off showers, 150 millimetres is entirely possible, especially given far north Queensland's extremely wet nature. But I reckon more widespread rainfall accumulations between 10 to 40 millimetres are going to be the norm, and some isolated falls up to 80 or 100 millimetres are going to be a possibility. We're definitely not expecting anything crazy in the way of rainfall. Not true wet season rainfall coming through. Definitely not yet, that's for sure. And rainfall is expected to extend up into the Daintree rainforest as well, but it's likely to be a lot lighter up there and a lot more short-lived as well. But yeah, mark your calendars, the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th, maybe wet days towards far north Queensland. A little bit of trivia, but for the official character, uh, the, for the official classification of the wet season beginning or the northern rainfall onset beginning, you have to have the first 50 millimetres of rainfall after the 1st of September, and it looks like far north Queensland is going to once again take that crown with the first 50 millimetres of rainfall happening north of the Queensland-New South Wales border uh, for the year of 2025-26, or the season of 2025-26, giving them the official start to monsoon season 2025-26. be interesting to see if that does actually materialise, but I'm holding out for hope on a lot of locations here. Of course, nothing in the way of flooding rainfall is expected, and I'll have more information over on the Facebook page as well. That's going to do it for today's weather forecast update, or more sort of today's very comprehensive weather forecast update. If you have enjoyed it and found it informative, then please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as well. A special shout out goes out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not own the show without them. Their support is as always much appreciated. But that is going to do it for me today. I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.